Hello and welcome. If this is your first time visiting, please be sure to check out my other repair videos. To support the channel for free, all you have to do is subscribe, comment, and like. Now let's get on to today's video. Hello and thank you for joining me today. Uh, the video is going to be with the 2000 Honda Accord. If you remember our last video, if you watched it, I was uh, complaining about P1259, which is a VTEC solenoid failure. I did something to the oil pressure sending uh, switch on the back of the engine. I uh, fixed a connection there. Uh, hopefully that was going to take care of it. There is also a pressure switch, oil switch on the side of the VTEC solenoid. And if the, that does not agree with the one that's on the engine, then it can throw that code. So that's why I went after that. Uh, a couple of different things can make that code happen as well. One is that the solenoid could just have gone bad. I mean, it, it could very well be that as well. And also a rough idle can cause the uh, 1259 code to be thrown. A uh, new symptom that's popped up over the uh, last week or so is I noticed when I first start the car, the idle would bounce a little bit, then it would come down and it would be okay. But usually when that happened, that's when the 1259 would be set. So uh, a couple days ago, I was sitting in traffic and I noticed the it, operating temperature, the, the idle, uh, it was bouncing again. It's like boom, 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 boom. That is very short and subtle, but it's uh, not right. And that was accompanied by a P0505, which is idle air control, is, is having trouble controlling the idle of the engine. It doesn't necessarily mean that the idle air control is broken, it's just saying it's having trouble doing its job. So I'm going with this possibility that the idle air control has now caused a fault that is making the 1259 code come up. And rather than jump right in and say that this is going to be uh, replacing the idle air control, we're going to do a couple of tests. There's a whole bunch of different things that can cause a bad idle, and a bad idle can cause the P0505, so don't just see that and just uh, load up the parts cannon. I'm going to show you uh, the process that I went through and how I arrived at the uh, fix that I came today. Uh, let's get on with the video. All right, gentlemen, with uh, idle problems, the very first thing you want to check on one of these engines is for a vacuum leak. Uh, your vacuum leaks are mostly going to occur around your intake manifold. You have several vacuum lines that all can contribute to that, as well as the seal. That's like a two-piece uh, manifold. It could be something around here that's loose. Uh, this, wouldn't, this is before the throttle body, so it's not as important, but anything after the throttle body, if you're getting air inside the engine, I think they call it pirate air, and that's going to cause you a problem with your idle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the car on and I'm just going to use brake clean. And what I'm going to use the brake clean for, I'm going to spray all around the, uh, the seam between the two pieces of the manifold, the vacuum hoses, uh, different parts up here on the top as well, and uh, just back over like these connectors right here. I'm going to get the car cranked up and we'll take a look at that, see how the engine reacts. If what we're looking for is if the idle increases, then we know that it got a dose of the brake cleaner inside of it, and that would indicate a vacuum leak. All right, with the engine uh, idling at operating temperature, we're going to start spraying the brake clean, see what we got. See there, we didn't really notice any kind of rise in the back, the uh, idle of the car. So I'm going to discount a possible vacuum leak right now, and I'm going to go after the uh, next part, which I'm pretty sure is going to be the failure of the idle air control valve. All right, the uh, location of the idle air control on this vehicle is behind the intake manifold. So if you're looking here, you have your throttle body. You move up, you go in the back there, and you can see. Right there where my finger's pointing, it's got Denso written on, written on top of it. That is the idle air control. There's a connector for it on the back. As you can see there, that has to come off. And all it takes to, to undo it, there's a, at the very top here, there's a 10 millimeter uh, bolt. And on the bottom, there's a 10 millimeter bolt. Uh, there's no way to show you this. I'm gonna take those two off, and then I'm gonna pick it up. And when I pick it up, they're gonna be two uh, water hoses that are on the bottom of it. I'll show you the one on my bench and so you'll see what I'm talking about. Alright, so here's the uh, new part that I'm talking about. Uh, you can see it has a place for a 10 millimeter bolt here and a 10 millimeter bolt here and then the electrical connection on the back which you just pinch and pull off. Now on the bottom what you have is two water inlets and all they do is they feed into the first chamber on the back of this and then just go right back out the other side and what that does is that puts heat in this as the engine warms up. So I hope that that'll help you get an idea of what I'm 
going to be pulling off the back here in just a second that you're not going to be able to see. Uh, once we get the two out, I'll raise it up and we'll see about getting these uh, water connections loose and we'll swap it out. All right, so I'm going to get in here. I'm going to use a um, quarter inch, 10 millimeter to get that out because everything's pretty tight back there and it's, it's kind of hard to get where you need to be. All right, so I'm going to get in here. top one out there you go all right with both of those out I'm able to reach back and kind of pull on the assembly and I'm, I thought I was gonna be able to pull up far enough to get those water hoses off but I'm not so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the electrical connection and I've got about all the tug on it I could get all right, I called an audible on the repair. I uh, went ahead and pulled my air box off. It's going to give me a little bit more room uh, back here where I need to be. And you can see here, there it is. I've just pulled it down to where I can get to it. And you see now I have, I pretty much have access to the clamps on the back and switch those out and uh, put the new one on. All right, here's the uh, outer air control valve that came off of my engine. As you can see here, it's got, again, the two places for coolant to go in, and it also has a vacuum hose here that connects somewhere on the back of the intake manifold. Uh, the problem, as you can see, is that the part that I got at the parts store does not have the, the fitting for the vacuum line. So kind of got a raw deal at the parts store. I'm going to have to return this and probably just get my money back and probably go with the, uh, the actual Honda part if I need to. Now, generally, when I take something like this off, I don't, I'm not taking it off to clean it. I'm taking it off to replace it. There's no sense in going to all the trouble of this and, unless you're just really short on cash and not going to replace the part. But since that's not going to be available for us today, and this is kind of messed up with my uh, video scheduling, what I'm going to go ahead and do is clean these two chambers out here with carburetor cleaner. This just carb build up in there, and that's what that's designed to eat up. And just a little bit more about how this uh, works with these three chambers is you can see the bottom one is just for the water to come in or your engine coolant and what that does is it warms the uh, case of this up the other two are air chambers and then you have a valve in between it that, that allows air to move between the two the bottom valve is situated after the throttle body and the top valve is situated to a chamber that's before the throttle body. So what happens is when the car goes down to idle and it starts to drop too low, the engine says, sees it needs more air, but the plate on the throttle body is closed. So this valve opens up a little bit. It allows air to pass from this into the vacuum part of your manifold and it adds air to the system to keep the idle uh, constant. All right, so there's a quick rundown exactly how this operates. Um, also, the two nuts that come out of that, or the bolts, mine had a lot of corrosion built up on it because this piece does have water passed through it. So sometimes your bolts that have, you know, they're connected to water parts, they'll actually allow water to seep all the way up and it'll just cause corrosion on it. So what I've done is I've cleaned that off with a wire brush. I'm just gonna go back over the top with Teflon tape before I reapply it. So we're gonna set this down with the carb cleaner. Let it sit for a little while, come back and get in there best I can with the brush, and we're going to put it back on the engine and see how we're running. All right, I'm back. I have this uh, cleaned out the best I can get it now. Hopefully, you can see in there this chamber here that has the actual valve part in it. I was paid extra special attention to it, uh, sprayed it down. I went in it with um, a small screwdriver like that and just kind of gently scraped along the edges and all to see if I could get as much of it worked loose as I could. I uh, used a toothbrush the best I could, keep respraying it with the carb cleaner until it finally comes out clean like that. Got the uh, Teflon tape applied to the uh, bolts for it now. And I'm going to add a little bit of uh, WD-40 with a silicone on it to the ends of these to make it a little bit easier to get those water hoses back on. So the install is going to be the reverse of the removal. I'm going to get that done and we're going to get the car cranked up and take a look at it and see how it's behaving now. All right, with all that back together, we're going to get the car a start. We're just going to watch and see if it looks like the idle's wanting to bounce anymore. It does appear to be acting correctly right now. But that does not say I have this uh, problem licked. It's an intermittent problem, which is kind of the, one of the hardest ones to find uh, when they go wrong. So hopefully mm -hmm. I've taken care of it.
So there you have it guys. Hopefully that's going to take care of the problem I've been having with the P1259 code and the P0505. Uh, that's been kind of irritating. Uh, it's not anything that's hurting the car. It's not anything that's making it undrivable, but I'm the kind of person I don't like anything being wrong with the car, especially something I went to so much time and trouble to get uh, to this point. If something else comes up, I'll be sure to let you guys know. Hopefully that's going to be the last video on this. I appreciate you guys watching today and I will catch you on the next one. Thank you.